Coach, talk a little bit about your time with the Texas Titans, the backstory behind that. How'd you get started with them? All right. It's a Wednesday. I'm living in Jupiter, Florida, Mm -hmm. driving my car and Kenny Trout. Now, Kenny Trout, um, I knew Kenny Trout before he was a billionaire. Okay, Kenny Trout was one of the, one of the, they should, I mean, he, he's an iconic man. Mm. Okay. I mean, he, you talk about a guy that changed the lives of so many families. Right. And, uh, and he's doing it in horse racing now and stuff like that with uh, Windstar farms and justified won the triple crown. So anyway, he created Excel and then, uh, Excel, he sold it and he got out, went public. He became a billionaire. But we always stayed in contact. And he'd be like, if he called me and I'd know, I'd tell my buddy, I'd say, hey, Brandon, listen, I talked to Kenny Kraut last night. <laughs> you did? How long? 53 minutes and 27 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. True story. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, so anyway, I'm, I'm driving home. I'm living in Jupiter, Florida, living in a really nice house. My life is good. And um, uh, Kenny calls me up and he says, hey, you got a minute, Scott? I'm like, yes, sir. He goes, hey, listen, you know, I, can you believe this? I just had to fire my second basketball coach coaching my boys. Mm. I said, really? He said, yeah, I did this, this, and this. And I said, I'm sorry, man. I said, well, listen, if there's anything I can ever do to help you, let me know. Mm-hmm. Now, understand, here's a man that for years <clears throat> for Christmas sent me a $20,000 gift check every Christmas. Wow. For years. Yeah. He still sends me a check, Right. It's a nice it's, gift. Oh, listen, for, the first time he <laughs> the first time he sent it to me, the I'm first time saying. he sent it to me, I thought it was two thousand mm-hmm. dollars. My wife goes, "No, honey, that's not two grand. That's that's twenty thousand. I said, "What?" So anyway, he Jeez. says, "He goes, you would move here to help me." I didn't say that. Yeah. I said, "Well, Kenny, as much <laughs> as you've done for me, I, I mean, if there's a way I can help you, I'll be more than happy." He says, "Do me a favor. Go home and ask Janet, which at the time was my wife." what she thinks about this. Give me 24 hours. I'll call you back. I said, yes, sir. I, I pulled over when I talked to him. Yeah. 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 Keep driving. Right. Take so no distractions. Yeah, no distractions. That's, that's, out of respect. that's crazy. <laughs> so I walk, I walk yeah. in my house and I said, honey, I said, uh, Kenny called. What'd he want? I said, well, he wants to know if we'd be interested in moving to Texas and becoming the basketball coach for his two sons. And here's here's where timing matters. The weekend before, where we lived, we used to be the third team mm-hmm. in Jupiter. Then we became we, – and when we were the third team, we were the only team that qualified for the state tournament. When we were the second team, we smashed everybody. This is your junior college, this is, right? No, no. This yeah. is when my son was your little. Son is, okay, so my, okay. we had some neighbors that didn't play on our team. Yeah. And we spanked them like 44 to – like. 14 at one time. I mean, it was a Jeez. beat down. And now my neighbors are mad at me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know, you go they got to write <laughs> neighborhood games, right? You're in the stands. <laughs> Can't even come home. No. Yeah. You got somebody uh, eyeing you while they're mowing the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true because now all of a sudden these people that were your friends when they were beating your team. Yeah. And now we're beating them down, mm-hmm. right? And my wife goes, How much is he going to pay you? I said, I don't know. She goes, I'm interested. Tell him, tell him I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Calls me up the next day. Has, actually, has Larry know. I that. like how direct she is, not to cut you off. Yeah, she's yeah. direct. <laughs> she, I was about to say, she's she said, "What do you want?" Point. And then, how much you pay? Well, <laughs> trust me when I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Women, they want to know where their bills are going to be paid for at the first of the month, not the last of the month. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's a fact. They want security mm-hmm. more than any one thing. Yeah. They want their their kids fed, diapers bought, rent paid. Car payment paid, insurance paid. They don't. It's 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 about a business. <laughs> it is in that scenario. Trust yeah. me when I tell you. Yeah. So so he calls me up the next day. Or he has Larry Novak, and Larry was our general manager for years for the Titans. He's since passed away. Great man, one of the greatest God fear men I've ever known in my life. Still miss him to this day. And he says, Kenny says we'll pay you this, 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 and this. I said, Hell, I'm in. Right. <laughs> I said, I'm in, right? So check this out. Yeah. Here's, here's how it happens. Mm-hmm. They give me a they they send me a one way ticket the next weekend. Uh, on on Sunday morning, I fly into Dallas out of West Palm Beach. 
uh, his uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel John Guider, who runs his security, picks me up at the airport, mm-hmm. takes me to Kenny's, and I go watch Preston play first and Grant Pace play second because he wanted to make sure his kids were good enough. Preston's good enough. So I go watch Grant play. One of the funniest things, there's three billionaire families in the gym. Three. How many times do you see that? Yeah. Jerry, jo- Jerry, Jerry Jones wow. is a uh, uh, son-in-law, and he's married to Charlotte, Jerry's daughter. Uh, their son, Paxton's playing on that team mm-hmm. with Grant. He's mm-hmm. coaching them. So there's three billionaire families. I look over, Jerry Jones is there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking. And this is this is a pretty bizarre scenario this here. For, intense. Yeah, yeah, for third grade basketball. Yeah. And so I said, yeah, he can play. Mm-hmm. So we come back. The next morning's Monday. The kids go to school. Kenny and Lisa, Kenny's wife, and, and I, we jump on Kenny's G5 and mm-hmm. fly up to Lexington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. They get off the G5, and then I fly back. They fly me to West Palm Beach, just me. The flight attendant, two pilots on a G five. I felt like damn Crockett and Tubbs. Man, I was, was like, getting that royal. Oh, listen, so bro, quick. I'm hey, up on a G five rolling, right? And you know, get off. They pick me up at the airport. You know, drive home. We're going to become the coach of the Titans. And you know, you, you kind of have an idea what you think you're going to be, um, but I didn't. It's hard to even imagine that big. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm, I mean, you know, we start out playing primetime. I don't know how good Texas is. Right. And, you know, we're primetime, right? And and I, we, I remember those I have days, a story. Man. I have a story. I don't mean to cut you off. but I played you guys, so I'll never forget this. So I was uh, I was playing with the team. I, don't, I think you remember the team I was playing on, the Flyboys. And so we had just won the Taps or whatever it was, uh, whatever the thing was. that We just won a state championship. In the fifth grade, so okay. you can imagine I was feeling myself. So I'm like, I'm one of the still I, do. I knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was feeling, I was feeling myself. So I was like, I, I knew I was one of the better guards in Texas in sure. my age group. I, I used to play up. I used to spank kids that were older mm-hmm. than me. So I was like, I, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm I'm on my way, right? Then we run into the Texas Titans. Now this is before they had the nice uniforms. You guys are still kind of wearing the reversibles and stuff like that. I, I remember. I still I'm playing the game back in my mind right now as I'm talking about it. And uh, long story short, they beat us. I think it was forty four to twenty. Oof. And that was the first. That was the, like the the largest deficit I had ever lost a game, and like in, in my age group, probably up to that point. And they had someone by the name of uh, this is pre Julius. This is they had Matt Jones. Matt Jones hung twenty on me, mm-hmm. and you know at the time twenty at in fifth grade feels like forty. Oh yeah, <laughs> 20 oh a yeah, lot. 20, a lot. 20, Oh yeah, twenty twenty in the fifth grade feels like forty. And thirty two minute game. Yeah, yeah. And running so, clock. Yep, running <laughs> clock. All, all of that. Oh, and yeah. so I said, uh, I said, I said, first of all, who is he? Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I I said I, I I never got the Texas Titans out of my mind. Of course, me being the competitor that I am, I right. wanted to beat y'all so badly. And uh, the closest I ever came was when I was with the DeSoto Hornets. We lost y'all by six. And so, going into my next question, I want I want to talk about some of the players that you coach. But uh, you guys are so fundamentally sound. Fourth, fifth, sixth grade. You got you had guys running around screens, pin downs, pick and roll. Man. I mean, running like pro offenses, offenses in literally middle school structure. It's structure, real structure. And so I, we kids that age, they didn't know. I mean, we we watched the game from a fan standpoint, and then having to play against a team that right. did what we used to watch as a fan. It's like the IQs were just off the wall. But um, just going into my next, our next question. With the Texas Titans organization, you guys have brought so much talent through that organization and just understanding and watching you guys grow that talent, not just be mm-hmm. talent, but to grow it and, and see these guys go on to be in the NBA overseas, uh, played in, in leagues across the world and, and mm-hmm. in the United States. Yep. What was kind of like the secret to what you guys did? I, I want you to not feel bad about losing forty four to twenty. And here's why okay. I say this to you. Peyton Pritchard, who plays for the Boston Celtics, mm-hmm. oh. they ran into us in Portland and uh we beat them ninety one to fourteen. Oof. 
ninety one yeah. to fourteen. Peyton Pritchard's like, and uh, we played against Peyton so many times, and the closest he ever came was eighteen. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, mean, it's I just, need, but it's it's it's, I need it's you yeah. in the NBA now. That's no, that's, that's I, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. <laughs> it was bizarre. But here's here's the guidelines. Okay. There was no. You couldn't call me up and say, "Hey, coach, listen, I'm going to a family reunion. I won't be able to go next weekend on the trip to uh, Virginia Ded- Beach." Dedication. Yeah. No, that that's not going to happen. Accountability. Yeah, yeah. you don't you don't mm-hmm. miss practice. Yeah. Um, your parents uh, aren't allowed to participate in when the games are going. They don't coach you from the stands. Matter of fact, they don't coach anybody from the stands. They don't cheer against the other team. Uh, they cheer for our team, and it's better they don't cheer for their son. They let other parents cheer for their son. Mm. Um, we would have we had rules. So if if Brandon, let's say you had a son that played on the Titans, and you didn't think he was getting enough shots, mm. okay, simple, no problem. Um, don't don't come up to me after the game asking me. Don't do it. You wait twenty four hours on Monday. Pick up the phone and call me, and I give you advice. Here's the advice. Hey, Coach, listen. Hey, it's Brandon, man. I just want to know what I can help my little son, David. He's excited, man. He loves being on the Titans. We love being on the Titans. Is there something we can do on our time away from the Titans to help our son so he can help the team win more? Mm, Wow. That's your way of telling me you're upset. You know what? Johnny's not getting enough shots. (laughs) And here's here's what we do. We statted every game. So if you say (laughs) – my son's the best. Like, here's an example. I, I love West Grandstaff. Now, West yeah. Grandstaff, you know, has done an enormous amount for basketball in AU. Like, you know, Big E, like, like Jazzy. I, I like those it. guys, those yeah. guys have have been have just unbelievable what they've done for the youth. Rest mm-hmm. in peace, Big E. Yeah, yeah, yep. and Jazzy, yeah. right? And Jazzy, yeah. And and, Jazzy, yeah. and so and so, Wes, his son plays on our team. Yeah, and Wes is telling me that his son is the best three-point. He needs to get more shots. You can't get mad at him if he's taking them missing. So I said, okay, here, let's do this. Let's you and I have a meeting. Mm. Come on in. Come on in. We'll sit down. We sit down, and I pull out the stats. He was 9 for 51 from the three-point line. Mm-hmm. He's 50% free. Th- he's a 50% three-point shooter, really. Well, here are the stats. This is game one, two, three, four. We would stat every game. We would have a video of every game. In the summertime, we did what was called Camp Titan. Camp Titan was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You would show up at 9 o'clock, and depending on how we wanted to run our practice that day, we, let's say we started with uh, skill training first mm-hmm. or sp- speed and agility first, 45 minutes, skill training 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and then we would practice an hour and a half. Then we would have lunch brought in, mm-hmm. Okay. Then every Tuesday we would have a speaker come in and talk to the kids. It could be from um, uh, no sex, you know, uh, faith. It could be an etiquette class where we teach you how to use a certain fork versus a suit, uh, what size fork to use when you eat your salad. We brought in people that could would teach our kids how to get interviewed, do the interview processes, um, so that when Julius Randall gets interviewed. He doesn't look like Patrick Ewing did when he got interviewed in college. And, and let me just tell you, it's, it's a harsh lesson in life, but our kids were taught, our kids were taught about STDs. Mm-hmm. We had, I, I'm going to tell you something. It scared the hell out of me when I left that meeting that day, that speaker came in and started drawing all these different things on the boards and yeah. what you could catch from this person because of the person that had something, an activity five years ago with somebody else, but it was passed on and passed on. It's like, it scared us all. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Jeez. we, we, ha- we had, we had those talks. Yeah. that's. We wow. had, we had, a, 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 how, how blunt can I be here? Go for it. Okay. We had a, we had a lady come in one time and I want to think maybe the kids were the oldest, maybe it was 15 and 13, maybe 14 and 12, mm-hmm. 15 and 13. Mm-hmm. And this beautiful lady walks in about six foot tall from Tennessee and we had, I mean, these are professional speakers. Mm-hmm. They're not just, hey, come by and tell the kids how to how to eat. You know, no, no. These are people that are in a, we had a an organization that we hired speakers from, right? And she comes in and she looks at everybody and she goes, oh my God, do I love sex. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Bruh. You have no listen, I'm like Did I just hear that right? And the yeah. kids are like right yeah. you know, Julius Friend is like going like this, right? Matt Jones is What'd she say? What'd she say? And and she goes, Oh no, I love good sex. I still can't believe that this lady's it's coming out of her mouth. I can't believe it. She's beautiful and this is coming out and she goes, When you're married. Mm. And she starts talking and she says, Come here. She brings up one of the older guys and has mm. hair on his arm. Mm -hmm. And she takes this piece of tape and she wraps it around his arm and pulls it off. He's like, oh, my gosh. Man, that hurt. She goes, that hurt, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And he, he goes, sit down. Here, come here. You come up. Another guy. Boom. Yeah, man, it hurt. By the time it got to the fifth guy, there was no, no pull, mm -hmm. no, no hair. It, was, it wasn't the same. Yeah. And she goes, the point that I'm making to you is that it becomes just like a normal thing, nothing special if you're doing it when you're in the seventh grade and the eighth grade and the ninth uh, grade. And, and wow. you want it to count. You want your marriage to last. You want, it, you want it to matter in your marriage. And so I was like, man, I wish my daughters were here, right? Yeah. Because, you know, it's, people don't realize. Yeah. You know, and so our kids were taught to be accountable to be respectful. Um, and I mean, if, let's, let's just think about it. Let's say your son plays on our team. Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's what you got going for you. Mm -hmm. On Friday, you're going to show up at Landmark Aviation. You're going to park your car, get out, walk in, put your bags on a bag cart. You and your wife and your son are going to come in. You're going to say hi to everybody. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be cool. We're going to walk out the back door. We're going to go walk on the tarmac and get on a private jet. Mm -hmm. When you get on that private jet, there's, uh, uh, chips and salsa, there's wraps, there's shrimp cocktail, there's things to grab to go sit down. So you have a little snack while you're sitting down. Mm -hmm. Before the plane takes off, the flight attendants come and pick that up. 20 minutes into the flight, you're in a situation where you're going to get a choice of steak or chicken mm -hmm. for your meal on mm -hmm. Friday. Right. Then when that's over, about 20 minutes before we land, they give us cookies with milk, mm. hot cookies that they make on the plane. Right. They, yeah. We land, there's a 54 passenger bus that picks us up. You don't touch your luggage. They put it on the bus for you. The bus takes you to the hotel. When you get off the hotel, they take your bags out. You grab them. You walk in. You don't stand in line to get your room key. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman already there waiting for us that has the room key. So you and your wife have a room. Your son has a private room connecting to your room with no roommate. So let's say that night we have to go play a game at 730. Well, when the kids come back at 10 o'clock from the gym and all that kind of stuff, they're hungry. Room service, no problem. Order room service. Wake up the next morning, go downstairs, buffet breakfast. Get on the bus. <clears throat> we go play our games. If we have to, we bring lunch in for the games. And then we come back to the hotel. And let's say we're playing uh, a 7 o'clock game that night. Then we'll have dinner buffet style at 4.30. Mm -hmm. All right. Come back after the game. It's 9 o'clock, 9.30 room service. We get up in the morning, we pack our stuff, we go play our games, we're eating our meals, we get back on the plane, we fly home. Um, you're never late for the plane. Yeah. Because it's private. Yeah. And you don't have to worry. You can't spend any money. You can't worry about how we can afford to stay in this hotel. We're not staying at the at the Motel 6. Yeah. We're staying at beautiful hotels, and here's why. Can't, we used to travel with security. Mm-hmm. We literally had police officers on our trips with us, undercover police officers, carrying, okay? Mm -hmm. And and so, and the reason Mr. Trout did this was not to protect his sons. It was to protect yours. Because if they go and kidnap your son, who do you think they're trying to get to you? No. They're trying to get to Mr. Trout because he's the guy that has what they want, which is money. Hostage. Yeah. That makes sense. It's, it's what it is. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And yeah. And so... I mean, that's how we live. So if you're if you have a problem sitting in the stands being quiet yeah. and not yelling at referees and coaching everybody, then all you're gonna do is cost your family a spot on the Titans. I just love how like just the structure that you guys have from day one. You know, I think you know, all the life principles and, and, and guidelines that y'all set from the parents to the players, and I think it translated over to the court, it just, which is why you guys were so successful. 